topographical sheet. A relief map shows the height of the land above the mean sea level on a flat surface. Several methods have been developed to depict the relief features on a map such as contours, form lines, spot height, benchmarks, hashores, etc. These methods have their merits and demerits. But contouring is the standard method for representing the relief on a topographical sheet. Interpreting contours The method of showing the relief with the help of contours is one of the most accurate and standard methods. Contour is an imaginary line which joins the points of places having the same height above the mean sea level. In other words, a contour is a line of constant height above the mean sea level. The contours are drawn on the basis of actual surveys done in the field. The difference between the values of any two successive contours is known as the contour interval or the vertical interval or VI. The vertical interval is usually constant on a map. The horizontal distance between any two contours depends upon the slope of the land. The horizontal distance is called the horizontal equivalent or HE. Identifying landform through contours. The contour lines have the following characteristics. The contour lines can never cross each other. When two contour lines having different heights meet, it means that the slope is vertical like a cliff or a waterfall. The spacing between the contour lines indicates the nature of the slope. The widely spaced contour lines show gentle slope, whereas the closely spaced contour lines show steep slope. All contour lines are marked with a number, which indicates their height above the mean sea level in meters or in feet. The contour with zero value represents the coastline. Types of slopes This distance between any two contours, that is, horizontal equivalent, HE on a map, is very important. It shows the gradient of the slope of the land. The contours are drawn close to each other when the slope is steep and they are spaced widely when the slope is gentle. Some types of slopes are shown. The widely spaced contours show gentle slope. The closely spaced contours show steep slope. It is very important to know and understand as to how some of the relief features are represented by the typical contour patterns. Hill A conical hill rises almost uniformly from the surrounding regions. It can be shown with the help of almost concentric contour lines spaced regularly. Plateau A plateau is a flat-topped highland rising abruptly above the surrounding region. The top of a plateau is almost flat without contours or has very few contours whereas its sides are shown by closely spaced contours. A ridge A ridge is an elongated hill and has a narrow upland area. The contours showing a ridge are more or less elliptical in shape. Gap A break in a line of hills or mountains affording a route through similar to a gorge or ravine. Saddle or call A low point along a ridge as between two mountain peaks. Pass A wide gap between a line of mountains in a mountain chain that provides natural access for animals and humans in high mountains. Settlement Patterns The form of settlement in any particular region reflects man's relationships with his environment. The various types of settlements have evolved over a long period of time. The development and growth of settlement also depends upon the religious and social customs of the society. Temporary and permanent settlements Depending on the length of time for which they are in use, a settlement may be temporary or permanent. Temporary settlements are those that are occupied for a shorter period of time. Tribes living in deserts, tropical rainforests and other inhospitable environments build temporary settlements. 
However, most of the settlements that we see today are permanent settlements. They are not abandoned and remain in use continuously for several years. Rural and Urban Settlements On the basis of type of occupation practiced by its inhabitants, the settlements may be rural or urban. In rural settlements, most of the people are engaged in primary occupation like agriculture, mining, fishery and forestry. The products are derived directly from nature. Villages are examples of rural settlement. In urban settlements, people are engaged in secondary and tertiary occupation. They either work in industries or they provide services like health and education. Towns and cities are examples of urban settlements. Compact and dispersed settlements The settlement where all the houses are built side by side, leaving narrow lanes and by lanes, are called compact settlements. There are collective amenities to serve the people like schools, places of worships, hospitals and markets, etc. Dispersed settlements serve few families and houses are scattered in isolated places. Life is simple and quiet as there is little opportunity for social gathering. These types of settlements are found on highlands or farmlands. Circular Pattern they generally develop around a lake or pond or an oasis in a desert area. When the people settle around such a water body, it takes the shape of a circular pattern, linear settlement. This type of settlement develop along the highway or railway line or along the canal or a river in which all houses are built in a line. Rectangular Pattern this type of settlement generally develops at the crossroads and the houses are built side by side leaving lanes and by lanes. Triangular Pattern Sometimes the settlements develop at the confluence of two rivers and the houses are built in between the two rivers that ultimately grows into a triangular pattern. The Radial or Star-shaped Pattern Such settlements are common in both towns and villages, where the dwellings spread out in several directions from a central point, which is either round a big water body or where many routes join together. Interpretation of Topo Sheets The study or interpretation of a topo sheet can be done under the following heads. Marginal information The information included are name and number of the topo sheep Area covered by the topo sheet in square kilometers, the area shown on the sheet, the latitudinal and longitudinal extent of the sheet, extent of the arbitrary grid, scale of the sheet and special information if any. Relief features and drainage. The information included under this heading are the contour interval on the topo sheet, the physical divisions, the description of the relief features in each physical division, major landforms and their location, the drainage pattern, the prominent water divides, the general slope of the area and the gradient and direction of flow of the important rivers. Prominent land uses The information under this heading include various types of natural vegetation and their land uses. Major occupations possible in the region or the main sources of livelihood such as lumbering, livestock raising, farming, mining, industries, etc. Means of transport and communications. This includes different means of transport shown on the sheet, such as tracks, roads, railways, telegraph and telephone lines. Post offices, correlation between topography and means of transport and also correlation between means of transport and human settlements. The human settlements. The information includes the urban and rural centres, their size and location, settlement patterns, any special activities associated with the urban centres, such as industries, mining, trading, administrative, defence, etc., density and pattern of the rural settlements. 
It also helps in finding land use and major occupations. Fact The Survey of India at Dehradun is the organization that surveys and makes topographical maps in India. The first survey of India was started by Colonel William Lambton in 1802. Radhanath Sigdar measured Mount Everest in 1852.